Failing constantly and trusting my gut to know if something isn't a good fit freed me up to attempt the next thing that either worked or I sucked butt at it or it just wasn't for me. And where you're at right now and what you dream of becoming could radically differ from the incredible shit you're accomplishing in the future. The Perspective Podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, my guests and I provide the skills for thinking bigger, overcoming adversity, and making an impact with your work. What's going on? You're listening to episode 181 of the Perspective Podcast. I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective, and my mission is to help you grow a fulfilling, profitable, and sustainable creative side hustle, creative pursuit, whatever you're pursuing with your creativity. At the end of each episode, I plug a listener of the week, so stick around to figure out how you can get a permanent shout out on a future episode. Real quick, are you on the SideHustlersCoaching.com A-list waitlist yet, and have you applied for the three-month Side Hustlers Coaching Program? The program kicks off September 7th through November 29th, and this is hella time sensitive as we're in the middle of the early bird private pre-launch that goes on through the 23rd. The worldwide public enrollment starts next week, Monday the 24th through Sunday the 30th, but I need you to know that half of the 12-person roster has already been pre-filled, so don't wait to take action to join the list and apply ASAP. If you're tired of seeing little to no progress and you refuse to be in the same spot you're in this time next year, then you have nothing to lose. So learn more about the program and apply right now. This is deep, transformative group coaching with a tight knit, like-minded family working together to unlock rapid results. And did I mention that one of the many perks for the students in the fall session is getting featured as a guest on the Perspective Podcast this November? If you didn't know, now you know, and there's plenty of other cool things um, if you go and learn more about all the benefits, experiences, and the perks of this program and apply ASAP before next week's worldwide public enrollment at SideHustlersCoaching.com. And don't worry, if you're hearing this in the future and you want first dibs at applying for the next round's roster, you can still join the waitlist as well. That's going to bump up your name in the application pool, so can't hurt to apply this time if you're hearing this later down the road. So today... We're jumping into part two of the Blaze Your Own Pass series. If you haven't checked out part one, stop what you're doing. Go back to episode 180 last week. Trust me, it's better in order. I'm setting up a story for you to go and kill it. Part one of this series was all about getting started and believing that whatever you want to creatively accomplish is possible for you. You gave yourself permission to explore the early stages of your creative dream without the pressure to monetize it right from the jump, and we're building off that this week in part two by laying the foundation for how you intentionally and authentically show up as yourself in your work. You can read this one in a blog format by visiting perspective-collective.com slash 181, and if you found value in this episode, just do me a favor, pretty please, spread the good word by sharing a screenshot or video of you listening or working to this in the background. Tag me on Instagram stories so we can connect and I can reshare the love back as you are the reason this show keeps growing and finding the people who need it the most by you sharing it. And as always, keep an open mind and act on anything that inspires you to do. Let's go. There's a quote by Brad Thorne that says, success leaves clues, and if you sow the same seeds, you'll reap the same rewards. And while there's a lot of truth in this, I'm an advocate that you can manifest your dreams on your own terms. It's too easy to feel like you have to replicate someone else's model for success. And I'm all for studying and referencing what others are doing. I do it all the time. But instead of copying their formula, variable by variable, step by step, I encourage you to leverage the parts that work best for you and do the damn thing your own way. Unfortunately, I fell into the trap of replicating someone else's success super early in my creative grind. So the first three years after college uh, were extremely rough on me in terms of lacking purpose and creative confidence. And maybe, maybe you could relate to this, maybe any stage, whether it's not after college or where you are right now. But Those three years, they were filled with failed attempts at drawing tattoos, designing logos, and co-running a clothing company. You know, everything I tried to do, it just felt like it just wasn't working. But as I look back and I connect the dots, all those failures led me to stumbling upon hand lettering out of anything, you know, just browsing Instagram one day. I was like, oh shit, this looks interesting. And, you know, I got, I I went deep into it. I fell up, I fell in love with it. It helped me starting to draw analog again, which then led me to posting my work like crazy on Instagram. And then in 2014, I gained a bit of traction with my artistic groove and I started Perspective Collective. I had no idea what I was doing, but I became a huge fan of people like Eric Marinovich, Lauren Hom, and Jessica Hish. 
to me, they had it all figured out. And I was convinced that the only way I was going to be successful like my idols and get the clout I so desperately crave for my peers was by one, becoming a full-time freelancer and two, working with the biggest brands in the world. Pretty dumb that I thought that was the only way, but this is what I saw all the big names doing. So this had to be the secret formula, right? And it took me longer than I'd like to admit to realize following someone else's path wasn't right for me and maybe it's not right for you. As I attempted to mimic my idol's footsteps, I quickly became hella unfulfilled and bored as fuck. It didn't feel right as I was solely in it for the glory and the recognition and just trying to gain clout from the people I I craved their respect from. It's important to go with your gut as freelancing, anytime I've done freelancing, it's just never set me on fire like the path my intuition kept nudging me to pursue, which was... As cheesy as this sounds, it's so true, but it kept nudging me to pursue the act of encouraging and empowering my creative peers. Again, super cheesy, totally understand. And I went with my gut not once, but twice during this five and a half years of uh, pursuing Perspective Collective as a side hustle. And I hit pause on taking on client work for an entire year, both of those times. And doing this freed me up to chase the other path that led me to where I am today. And the first time I hit pause on freelancing was in 2016. I went all in on finding my voice, my style, and just focused on growing the podcast. Because every time I get hit up with a freelance project, it was always referencing someone else's work for me to emulate. And I'm like, dude, this sucks. I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to be a technician and not expressing my own style. I didn't have a style. So uh, the second time I hit pause was in 2019. And while leaving income on the table was scary, I went all in on chasing the call to become a creative side hustle coach by saying no to freelance and I killed that online shop. And those were my two breadwinners for side income. Scary. But when I went all in on intentionally blazing my own path on my own terms, that's when shit started to click. Even if it didn't always feel like things were working. So here's one major lesson you need to hear. And that one major lesson I've learned firsthand from experience and from hundreds of conversations with podcast guests is this. There's no one size fits all creative career path. And I think my homie Jason Craig was the one who said this on an episode that we had around the winter time in 2019. So check that out. The typical route of freelancing or selling merch aren't your only options. They're just options. It's all on you to find what works best for you and your process that aligns with who you want to become, and what do you want to accomplish with your creativity. It's a nonstop, ever-evolving experiment until things start to click. And even when they're clicking, they may not seem like they're clicking, but hindsight is 2020. I've been a constant, chaotic work in progress since graduating college in 2010 and hitting rock bottom once in between there and dealing with depressed funks at least two or three times in there, like really, really depressed funks of, damn, I should not be doing this anymore. Why me? I don't have what it takes. I'm about to quit. But in this work in progress since 2010, I've always tried new things that caught my interest to see where they took me. Failing constantly and trusting my gut to know if something isn't a good fit freed me up to attempt the next thing that either worked or I sucked butt at it or it just wasn't for me. And where you're at right now and what you dream of becoming could radically differ from the incredible shit you're accomplishing in the future. All right, so yes, have that goal that you're chasing, but just be open, stay active and open, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, that a whole different path could open up for you like it did for me. And that's the beauty of investing in your dream and going all out to blaze your own path is all these other opportunities can come your way when you're not so focused on mimicking someone else's footsteps. So which scenario are you living out right now? Maybe you're just finding the guts to get started or you've been doing this for a while but haven't seen much progress. I talked to a lot of people who are in both of these buckets. And if so, one thing that helped me get on the fast track for growth that I now teach my students from the jump is being intentional with your creative dream. Yes, allowing yourself to explore, have some fun, but let's be intentional and strategic about it. It's cool to have fun and explore. Yeah, it totally is. But you want to build a career from your creativity. And doing that, you got to start taking yourself more seriously, especially your creativity, especially how you show up, which is foreshadowing part three. So, Here's the two scenarios, and there's a big difference between scenario one, winging it each day and creating when it feels good, hoping that something big happens for you, versus scenario two, intentionally and more importantly, authentically approaching your creative dream with a personalized game plan that's unique to you and your dreams. The latter is what I teach, 
And my son is one who just does things in the moment when they feel good without having to plan. He just shows up and do, uh, does it. And, you know, I don't want to be like my son. I like to have a plan, still do what feels good, but like be intentional about it. I just don't do things in the moment when they feel good. You know, I'm not like my son. So maybe that's a burn to some of you, but it is what it is. That's how I approach things. And it gets results. So let's talk about what being intentional with your creative dream looks like. When onboarding student applicant prospects to the, the coaching program, let me give you a great example of how I help people like you be intentional. I invite these prospects to a free one-on-one dream and scheme consultation call. This call is hella intense to see if the program is the right fit for them during the season. And if this is you and me, you apply to the program and you're a good fit, I'm going to hit you up after you apply. And during this call, you and me are about to go deep on discovering the fears, doubts, and insecurities that are holding you back from chasing the future version of yourself and the badass goals you want to accomplish. We're going to go hella deep on tapping into your sweet spot, which episode 11, I figured that out last week, I dropped the ball on that. And the sweet spot is your intersection of your greatest strengths and your greatest passions. And we're also going to tap into finding your secret sauce. And this is finding those three buckets or those three ingredients that make up your secret sauce of stories and experiences, strengths and skills, and your core identity of interests, passions, beliefs, and values. And that is episode 161 of the Perspective Podcast if you want to go deeper on that to know what I'm talking about. On this call, we're also going to go deep on crafting a powerful, personalized game plan around a passion project that aligns with your sweet spot and your secret sauce. And then we're also going to go deep on leveraging that passion project to cultivate disciplines on overcoming the inner critic, consistency, growing an engaged audience, attracting clients, promoting yourself, and more. And finally, in this call, we're laying the foundation for rapid short-term growth which leads to long-term longevity and success. It's a lot of shit we go on on a call. And sometimes it goes over an hour. But then if we're a good fit, we do the damn thing and we get started. And within three months, this group transformation coaching will show you how to intentionally pursue your creative dream while putting you on the fast track for unlocking those breakthroughs that always felt so out of reach. So regardless if the coaching program is a right fit for you, that's totally fine. You can do it on your own as well too. It just It's something different when you have a coach. I have a coach. I'll always have a coach. But you got to do the hard work by investing in yourself. And some of the most uncomfortable and hardest work you'll ever do is getting to know yourself better. It's scary. Diving deep into the unknown of yourself, the endless abyss of you. Sounds a little gross, sounds a little intimidating and scary. I've shoved and uh, blocked off a lot of things from my scary childhood because I didn't want to revisit them. But like once you revisit and you get to know more about you, things can really happen for yourself. And Captain Obvious here, I don't know if you've seen those commercials on TV, maybe it's Travelocity, I don't know, but Captain Obvious here, but the more you invest in your personal development, physically, mentally, and spiritually, your quality of life and your creative pursuits will drastically and dramatically improve. I'm a big believer that opportunities and money will exponentially come your way as a byproduct or a a happy little side effect, as Lauren Hahn would say, of you continually gaining clarity and confidence along your path despite the moments of doubt and adversity. Those are going to be a part of it. Money and opportunities will come your way also the more you continue to find your unique voice, your style, approach, and offerings. They'll come your way by investing in your own personal growth and development. They'll come your way by establishing authority and the credibility by showing up. These things will come your way when you continue to serve and make an impact on those who are an ideal fit for what you do. The more you know about yourself, the easier it is to find what works for you as you blaze your own path to creative success. It's all on you. You got to do the hard work, getting to know yourself better and having the guts to continue to show up even when it's not convenient and putting yourself out there so you can tap into that next version of yourself. That's what it's all about. PC Family, part two of the Blaze Your Own Path series. And if you're riding that momentum for part one into part two, Then part three is going to put a fiery and punchy cherry on the top. We're closing this series on how to attain a pro mindset while taking massive uncomfortable action to manifest that creative dream of yours. So stay tuned. A lot more coming next week as we wrap things up. I think you're really going to dig this one if you like part one and part two. And if the show has helped you along your creative grind, there are two ways you can support what we're building here. First off is by financially backing the show over at patreon.com slash perspective podcast, specifically like my family, Iron Bean Coffee Company and Tony Minix do. With as little as your weekly cup of coffee, you can unlock new episodes before they even come out and get tons of other value and perks by visiting there and backing up the show. 
And it really, really, really helps me out more than you'll ever know. So thank you, Iron Bean Coffee Company, Tony Minix, and everybody else who backs the show. And the other way to support it is by subscribing and leaving a rating and review on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. Not only does this help the show climb the charts in the arts design category, but more importantly, it locks you in as a future listener of the weeks like this week's listener of the week. This one comes from Darichi Buena Onda from Belgium. Woo! This one's titled Awesome Podcast, five stars. I started listening last week, now I can't stop. Really fuels my day with positivity. Thanks, Scotty, and everyone here. Just like that, simple, sweet, took less than five minutes to do, and it locks you in as a shout out on an episode, so you can do that too, to be a future listener of the week. And as I wrap things up, I wanna give a huge thank you, a huge shout out to my podcast editor, Anya Brennan, executive assistant, Paige Garland, video specialist, Colton Bacher, social media coordinator, Hannah Schick, and Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope theme music you hear on this show. And as I wrap things up, I wanna encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this.